Hey everybody. So this is, I guess, my second music tape. Um, I'll probably do tapes that aren't music oriented, but because John has been posting so much, I'll most likely uh, respond to some of those as well as some of my own thoughts. I'll especially probably talk about a lot of the early stuff that kind of led to the explosion of uh, all the bands like Nirvana and um, Mud Honey, Green River, um, Soundgarden, all that stuff. The, the stuff that I experienced was really leading up to that and kind of what was the scene and what was the um, influences that kind of made that all happen. Anyway, uh, John today posted a uh, couple of videos about a small um, cassette compilation that we made in 84 called Rock and Rail. And this is the, what it looked like right there. Uh, he goes into pretty good detail and I'm going to link his videos down at the bottom of this as well so you can check him out. He's got side A posted. He'll probably post side B, I'm not sure. Um, but I was going to give a little insight. I mean, he covered it pretty well. Um, mainly the idea that we uh, somehow got this idea that we wanted to make our own compilation. We, of course, were really into punk rock and had been into heavy metal before that pretty heavily as well. <clears throat> And we had posted an ad in uh, the Rocket magazine and probably Maximum Rock and Roll to get submissions so we can make this compilation tape. Uh, the most notable inclusions on there were, um, you know, Girl Trouble, which is a big Tacoma band, and, and I think we're just kind of getting notoriety at that point. And everyone around here knew about them. They had, uh, of course, a really awesome fanzine called Wig Out, which if you've never checked out, you can probably find a either digital or real copies of that used to be around all over the place, especially in Tacoma. And then also Green Rivers on there, uh, a couple songs and uh, a few songs by the Melvins. There's a bunch of other bands too. It wasn't really a Northwest compilation because we did get submissions from um, other places in the U.S. and uh, we kind of just weren't thinking about a Northwest compilation. There really wasn't a thought that that would be a big thing. Um, and from all the things that we can find out, we were definitely, if not the first, one of the very first two or three uh, places that the Melvins ever uh, were included. I think they were also in K Records that same year in 84. Uh, Green River may be the first, if not one of the first for them as well. Uh, a couple of little notes that John didn't discuss. Um, so the beginning and the end, there's kind of weird little recording things that we added. Um, the beginning was a little like montage of musical bits that I made. I'm not sure exactly why I did it. I used to make compilation tapes for people and friends and myself all the time. So I included all these little tiny little like repeated bits of songs, mostly from punk and a few of them from uh, metal. It might be kind of fun game for people are really nuts stuff to kind of figure out what all the little bits are from. I haven't gone through and even figured it out myself, but I'm sure that someone out there would categorize it all. And then at the end, there's a little skit on side two. Um, that was, especially with me and David French, we used to do this thing where we were really bored and we'd uh, uh, sit around the t and in the TV room and we'd put on like the PTL club or we'd put on whatever TV was really horrible and just turn off the sound and we would just dub over at our own little place. I'm not sure why we did that. I mean, it was kind of pre uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000, but essentially it was kind of our version of it, I guess out of pure boredom in those days. So anyway, uh, hopefully you go check out the videos my brother did and, and actually see the tape. It's very raw, of course, really rough, but it does show you that um, Everything was kind of do-it-yourself in those days, and that's what we were trying to be part of. So, hope you enjoy.